Aloha class, uh, 7.2 areas in the plane. I got to tell you, I'm really excited. I know we're watching this. You're going to be watching this after it's occurred, but I got to give huge love out to anybody that appreciates their teachers. I definitely appreciate all my students. I know I got a little, I got a little teacher appreciation volleyball game uh, tonight with a Miss Alessio. She invited me to that. I appreciate that more than you know. And then I got a nice little jersey. Smells good. Even wash it for me. I get to rock a Manuka Indians football jersey tomorrow because of a Michael Zito. Thank you so much. And it smells yum, yum. Okay, here we go. Let's rock this. We are at topic 8.5, finding the area between curves expressed as functions of y. Or vice versa, actually, right? We'll take it a step further. I won't show you that, that next topic. Okay, but let's get rolling today. Okay, uh, so here goes. Uh, areas in the plane. Let me move this up a little bit. Recall the following property of definite integrals. Remember, the, the, an integral of a difference is the difference of two separate integrals. Okay, and would you be able to draw what that looks like? Okay, and here's an example of what it looks like. Let's say we have a graph F, and let's say we have a graph G. If I find the integral, let's say, from A to B, what's the answer of that bad boy? Boom! It's that bad boy right there. And guess what? And, and yes, you should think of this as the area between the curve and the x-axis. Okay, but if I do the both of those as the area from the curve to the x-axis, you can see that when I subtract those two, it's going to leave me that. And guess what? It doesn't matter where I draw that. It could be above the x-axis. It could be below the x-axis. So I could draw my little f that kind of goes like this and think about it a little bit. Hopefully you're like, no, Mr. Tanaka, I don't think that's right. But guess what? Homie says I am, so it means I'm right. And you can test it, okay? If we go from A to B and I subtract those two, believe it or not, it's going to give that area. And you can think of G, you know, this piece right here, of being the area from the curve to the x-axis. But if you subtract out and you work on that, and if you look at it, it's actually going to work out each and every time. So now when I subtract two functions, it's not only the curve to the x-axis, it's actually like one curve to the other curve. All right, class? And that dives us in into the last little parts of AB calculus here. Let's look at the region in another way using the following pictures. Okay, example one, draw a rectangular strip. What is the height? What is the width? Would the height and width of the rectangular strip be different if you drew it in a different place within the shaded region? Is the height different for figure one than it is for figure two? How can we use the rectangular strip drawn to determine the shaded area between the two curves? There's my rectangular uh, length, or height I would call that, right? And there would be my width. And it doesn't matter if I draw it there and I draw it the same place here. Is it the same exact height? It sure is. So it doesn't matter if I move this area up or if I move it down. And the question is, how could I possibly uh, get the area between these two curves? Well, guess what? An infinite amount of rectangles. And guess what, class? Isn't it going to be the same exact answer? It sure is. So interesting. Hmm. Homie says, hmm, 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 hmm. Okay. So here we go. Let's go ahead and move this bad boy up. So we have a little formula here that the area, ooh, I like getting that off of there. Okay. So the area uh, of a region between two curves. Okay, so f and g have to be continuous functions. Okay, let's say that g is less than f just for the purpose of this. If it was vice versa, these just would be flipped here. For all x uh, in the interval from a to b, then the area of the region is defined by that. Okay, let's do a problem. So hopefully it makes 100% sense. Now, you've got to be very good at drawing in this class, all right, because these are a lot of non-calculator questions. So let's graph that guy. Y equals x squared plus 2. That would be a parabola that is shifted up to. Okay, so booyah, booyah. There we go. That's y equals x squared plus 2. Now, y equals negative x. Okay, that's a y and x intercept there, and it's down 1 over 1. So I will get a graph that looks like that. Y equals negative X. How sweet. It's using algebra 2, using algebra 1. And then I'm going to draw a uh, line at X equals 0. Booyah. That would be X equals 0. That's right down the Y axis. And X equals 1. X equals 1. And it wants me to shade that region. Shady, shady, shady. All right. It says to find the area. Well, let's, 
let's use that formula we just learned, right? What was that formula? It was the integral, the integral from a to b, and in this case, it would be from, right, x equals 0 to x equals 1, because that's where I cut it off, and it's going to be the top because it's set up there that the top comes first, so the top function would be x squared plus 2 minus the bottom function, which would be negative x, and oh, snap, donezo, right class? And what do you notice? You should hopefully notice something about that integral I set up. Everything is in terms of x, right? That was the topic we talked about today. All right, so here we go. So first thing I'd want to do is maybe clean this up. I don't really have to write x equals if everything is in, is in terms of the same variable, and I get x squared plus x plus 2 dx. Oh, sweet, do a little anti -derives. Okay, boom, right? Plus, what would that be? That would be 1 half x squared plus 2x from 0 to 1, right? And we've been doing this quite a bit in this class, so I'm going to go st straight to the fancy, dancy answer key, and if you do all that stuff, you get 17 Six. You're kidding me if this thing already ran out. All right, class, take my word for that because I'm going to have to restart this bad boy. It seems to not be working with me here in this chapter, uh, but I found a way to at least get it going. So that would be 17 over 6. Okay, plug in that 1, plug in that 0, subtract the 2, and do your math work. Okay, so let's see if I got this bad boy fixed. I'm going to have to open up a new page. I apologize. Hit pause if you needed to look at that a little bit more in depth. Uh, but here we go. Come on, work, please. Oh, sweet. Now, work to the end. Oh, snap. These are different. So one way I could do those is solve for the Ys, right, class? But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it as it is. Look at the graph and see if maybe there's another way I could do this problem. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this. Here we go. There's my x, y, and x axis. Uh, hopefully we know that's a parabola that opens up to the left. Why? Because of that negative right there, right? It's reflected, and it's translated three units to the right. So drawing just a brief sketch of it, there's my parabola. And you will have to be able to do things like that. Now, this guy here, how do I graph that? Well, it would help. Now, it is okay. Let's just subtract that one over there. Probably be a little bit easier to graph if I have that in old school slope intercept form, right, class? So did I do that right? Yes, I did. So we go down one, and I got a little point there, and then we're up one over one. So I get a graph that looks like this. Ooh, they intersect there and there. And it says that I have to find this area right here. Now, here we go. Now, this is where we have to really think about these things, okay? If I make my top to bottom rectangles, what do you notice? Oh, snap, home homes. I notice that the top and bottom kind of change, right? I go top to bottom, top to bottom, right? And it ends up being that line minus the parabola. Line. But then when I get to here, it kind of flips. It goes parabola to parabola. So guess what? That You don't want to do it that way. So there must be another way, right, homie? Well, let's see. Okay, let's hope there's another way because that could get pretty tough. Oh, snap. I don't think I can erase. So here we go. I'm going to use this fancy dancy uh, lime green dude. And what if I go right to left? Oh, snap. For reals? And if I go right to left, it never gets broken up. It always goes from the parabola to, and I'm going to redraw this just so we can totally see it. I've got that. I've got my line that goes through like that. There's my shaded region. I'm going to go back to the blue. And if I go right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, it never gets broken up. So guess what? This problem I want to do in terms of Y's. Well, if I do it in terms of Y's class, guess what? Everything has to be in terms of Y's. So what the heck are these values in terms of Y's? Well, going back to Algebra 2, I could find that by setting the two equations equal to each other, right, class? Because if they're equal to each other, I'm kind of trying to do math and talk here at the same time, that's going to be where the two intersect. And that'd be minus 3, so that'd be minus 2, right? Ooh, sweet, I get to factor. Oh, we get to just use all math that we ever learned. So I get values of y equals negative 2 and y equals positive 1. So guess what? I know it doesn't. It looks like it more in this picture because I drew it a little bit more accurately. That definitely looks like negative 2 for the y, and that definitely looks like positive 1 for the for that for the uh, for that y. So we go from negative 2 to 1, 
and then it's the right minus the left, right? When I do it this way, because it's kind of have to be the bigger minus the smaller. So here we go, minus y squared, minus y plus 1. Big mistake made here, right, is that minus sign is I'm going to have to distribute that bad boy of dy. So here we go. I go the integral. I don't have to write y anymore because everything is in terms of y's. And I should clean this up. If I clean it up, what do we get? We get a little negative y squared. Um, I get a minus y. And then a 3 and a minus 1 give me a plus 2 dy. Let's do a little antiderivs. And I get a 1 third just using a little power rule. Right, class? We do that. We do a little fundamental theorem of calculus. I'm going to use my little answer key over here. You guys practice. Please make sure you practice finding these answers. And I get an answer if we do all that stuff of 9 over 2. All right, now let's pray. Please work. Please go up. Hit pause. Hit pause and make sure you can get nine halves. Be good at, at, at working with those fractions. Uh, I'm going to save us some video time here. Um, but make sure you practice it. Make sure you get nine halves. So which way? So the first problem we did, right, class, we had x's. That last problem all had y's. So the question is, how do I always like, I mean, that could be kind of tough each time, right? So let's look at a problem. And I'm going to show that you can actually do it both ways, OK? Uh, so here we go. Let's grab this bad boy. Okay, so here we go. Booyah, booyah. And we have y equals 1 means I'm going to come up here and I'm going to draw my line. There's y equals 1. Now, some of us probably are, are going to struggle with that cube root. And if you struggle, you just pick some values. Now, that technically is kind of like a cube root. And hopefully we have an understanding what a cube root looks like. But if you forgot, like I said, let's plug in some values. Right, class? I could plug in a 1. And if I plug in a 1, I get 0. Right, class? Okay. Uh, I could plug in a 2. And if I plug in a 2, I get 1. Right? Let's plug in a 0. Oh, if I plug in a 0, I get a negative 1. Okay, class? Uh, and then what else does it say? Oh, it says to, oh, we're just going to focus. Okay, I was going to say this graph is going to go on forever. But this graph actually, class, looks kind of like this. And it has a little sweet little curvature right there. But it says to only focus on the first quadrant. So there we go. Booyah. Okay, snap. This is kind of tough right here, right, class? Ooh, there's actually a couple ways if we can do this. So I'm going to show you. Let's do this with X's. Okay? And then over here, we're going to do it with Y's. All right, if I do it with X's, what does that mean? That means I am going to, ooh, and I'm going to have to draw two pictures here, huh, class? Because it won't erase. That means I'm going to go top to bottom, top to bottom. Oh, snap. Find the area of that guy? That is just a square. I know, yes, it looks like a rectangle, but it's a square because, remember, I went one here and I went one up. Oh, well, that's, I mean, that's just, well, I guess, I guess let's set up an integral, huh, class? So that'd be the integral. It's in terms of x's. So I start at zero, and I'm going to go to one, right, class? And then uh, it's going to be the top, which is one, minus the bottom, which is zero. Oh, snap. And it's a dx. Oh, well, that looks really tough, huh, class? 1 minus 0 is 1. Oh, for reals? What's the antiderivative of 1? Well, that's just a little d. Oh, snap. Shame on you. That's just a little x. Oh, that's 1. Okay, so that finds me that piece. But I'm going to have to add from 1 to 2 because that top minus bottom switches, right, class? And that would be 1 minus x minus 1 to the 1 third of dx. Okay, so that's plus. Can I simplify that? No. So let's go ahead and find a antiderivative, and that antiderivative would be x. Uh, ooh, that's a, oh, snap. That would, we'd have to go back and do some u subby sub, right? That's u to the one-third. Well, u to the one-third would be u, add one, that would be four-thirds, but to divide by your four-thirds or multiply by a reciprocal. You guys see how I did that? And I know we've talked about it in class, how you don't have to do u sub if your derivative of u is 1. And the derivative of x minus 1 is 1. So I just treated this as my u. It's just a power rule antiderivative, right, class? And then, hey, you just, plug, you just do your little calculator with that bad boy, and you get 1 plus. It's your job to make sure you guys work through that. And you get 1 plus... Uh, ooh, I just have a final answer here. You know what? In case, no, I'm not doing all that stuff. You should end up getting for this stuff a 2 minus a 3 fourths minus a 1 when you do all of that work, and your final answer of 5 fourths. Okay, class, make sure you work through that. I'm not going to 
uh, waste our time doing that busy work. Okay, class? Uh, and I'll be honest. We had to break that up into two intervals. Why did I have to break it up into two intervals? Is because when I started doing my rectangles, it got broken up top to bottom, top to bottom, and then the top to bottom switched. So maybe it would have been easier if I did it in terms of Ys. Let's see. Let's draw this graph again. Y equals one. But the cool is we're showing you two ways to do the same problem. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty cool. Right there's my shaded region. All right, let's go ahead and do a, a little, uh, a little right to, right to left, 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 right. Oh, sweet! It never gets broken up. So if it doesn't get broken up, we can do everything in terms of y's. But if everything has to be in terms of y's, let's be careful. What's my smallest y? Well, it's zero because I start right here. What's my highest y? It is one. Boom. So I go right there, and then it has to be top. Ooh, top minus bottom. Shame on you, Mr. Tanaka. Home at homes. It has to be right minus left. And what is the right? Well, the right is this curve, but there is an issue. That is in terms of X's, and we just said Y's, right? That was a Y. That was a Y. So this has to have Y's. But guess what? Let's just cube both of those sides. Oh, sweet. I got rid of that. And then just add one to both sides. Oh, that's not too bad. There we go. So that is the right minus the left. What's left? Oh, it's just zero, right? Because it's the y-axis. So we got a little boom, right? Let's take an antiderivative here. Well, I'll clean it up, right? That'd be just y cubed plus one dy. Let's take an antiderivative, which would just be some power rules, right? Class plus y. I'll finish you this one for you because it's easy peasy Japanesey. You got a little one-fourth plus a 1, right? That's the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. And the second part is 0 plus 0 is 0. So we got a little 5 fourths. Oh, that was so much more okay than the other one. Right, class? Wouldn't you say so? I would say for show. Oh, snap, 7-3 volumes. Last section of AB calculus. But gets a little cray-cray. I think we're going to have to probably do three videos in this next one. But how about it? This one was under 18. Thanks, Holmes. Thanks, appreciation. I appreciate all of you. Aloha.